bullseye. Yep, that's what it looks like. The eye of the Sahara, otherwise known as the Rishat structure. In fact, it looks like a 25 mile or 40 kilometer diameter bullseye. It is located in west central Mauritania, northwest Africa. The first investigators thought it was the result of a meteor impact, but later investigators felt that it is a highly eroded volcano of sorts. The current theory is that it formed when the ancient supercontinent of Pangaea started to break apart. Now, following that line of thought, a complex scenario of how it formed as a volcanic pimple on the surface of the Earth that eventually burst, followed by erosion, is the theory of the day. But this is totally speculation. The only thing that scientists really know about the Eye of the Sahara is that it doesn't seem to have been the result of a meteor impact. There are two accepted reasons for this. The first is that there is not enough melted rock for it to be the result of a meteor impact, since meteor impacts of such magnitude normally melt a lot of rock. And the rocks that do exist at the site seem to mostly be from Earth. So the current theories focus on the idea of an old volcano, or actually a volcanic bubble that collapsed. As you will soon see, the volcanic idea doesn't hold water, bubble or no bubble. What really formed the Eye of the Sahara is something much different. No conventional theory really fits the facts, and the reason is that the Eye of the Sahara was not formed by anything geologically conventional. It's very hard, um, but this non-surface structure is made from natural materials. It is man-made, but the materials from this non-surface structure is natural, kind of like a rock, like the 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 texture of this non-surface structure feels like a rock, a hard, ruffled rock, <laughs> but it's in the air, oh, and spinning and revolving. Well, you see, if you force yourself to exclude certain possibilities, such as the possibility that the eye of the Sahara could be the result of extraterrestrial activities, then you are only left with ideas that you have to bend really hard to fit the known facts. In my experience, I have found that scientists do that a lot. They contrive theories to fit the facts that they want to consider, and they exclude theories that require facts that they are forbidden to consider. All in this front area, there are subjects, just lots of subjects, and a huge mass of them are going up these stairs all the way up to the entrance. There are three targets for this project. The first is the initial formation of the Eye of the Sahara, or the Rishat structure, located in Mauritania, Africa. The second is the Eye of the Sahara at the current time. And the third target is the same location about two years before the creation of the Eye of the Sahara. It is just a lot of energy around it, around this thing, submitting it, just putting it out, and it's pulsating, it's vibrating. I can hear it buzzing sound, or there's a large, it's just very chaotic and big energy field around the pyramid. Um, large, very large. This is what really happened to create the Eye of the Sahara. This is what was there before the Eye was formed, and this is what was destroyed when the Eye was formed. This is who, what, and why. And it just looks, you know, like a lot of people are just like dying here, and, and it just feels like I'm losing subjects all over me, like dropping like flies. Um, to begin, let's throw out the volcano idea. It's a hole in the ground, a depression with concentric rings. But there are too many convoluted special conditions for the idea that it was a volcanic bubble that collapsed to work easily. If you try to come up with a theory that requires a long list of special conditions, you can explain anything with a crazy theory. The best approach is always to employ Occam's razor. The explanation that requires the most number of assumptions is usually wrong. And the explanation that requires the least number of assumptions is usually correct. But this circular center is so many ridges and, and it's like steps and layers and this whole smooth ground. It's like things where it's been closed in and it feel like there's 
a lot more underneath. From the perspective of our remote viewing data, the Eye of the Sahara is a result of a very powerful extraterrestrial attack. It was sufficiently powerful that it created a depression in the land. That's what it looks like, and most likely, that's what it is. A uh, female, dark, dark long hair. Uh, she does not feel human. Uh, she, she's very elegant. She's got this air about her, uh, like she's in charge. Um, bossy, maybe, but not in a bad way. She's just a dominant alpha feminine subject. Uh, again, like I said, very sure of herself, walks with confidence and tall and big. I, I see this thing that's like a majestic bird standing, uh, human-sized. It was not enough simply to defeat the fascistic extraterrestrials. It was essential to eliminate their residual influence on human culture, to completely wipe their influence off the cultural map, so to speak.